It gotta be aesthetically pleasing. Talk to him. And that's what we get into. Say what? Cop and stay. Are you in the building? I like that representation. I like that. I think they ready to represent. It's interesting, Baltimore is a basketball uh, town because I'm a former basketball player. It's kind of the place where um, that gave me the, the greatest joy of being a student athlete. Um, I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado. My parents were military, so I've lived in Germany and California by way of family from Mississippi and, um, and chose to go to Hampton University. So it's 30 years. I've been in this industry almost 31 years, been the commissioner this is my 12th tournament. Um, I'm including the virtual tournament in 2021 after COVID um, because we had a lot of planning and work to do to engage fans and sponsors and, and alumni. But definitely, um, you know, sports has been the place that has driven me to be in this role currently. Uh conversation the other day because there was a point in the tournament you had to play in. Not all 16 teams played in the CIAA. So it'd be the top eight, you know, from, yeah, the top eight for men's and women's. And the women weren't playing um, in the beginning of the the in the beginning of the week in the same venue as the men. Matter of fact, the women's banquet was on a separate night than the men's banquet. This gentleman is Bob Mormon the commissioner of the Central and Collegiate Athletic Association. You've got some fine teams in this conference. Tell us about them, Bob. It's a mighty hot conference. We have Elizabeth City State University in North Carolina in our northern division, and we have Hampton Institute, Norfolk State, St. Paul's College, Virginia Union, and Virginia State University. In our southern division, we have Fayetteville State, Johnson C. Smith, Winston-Salem State, Livingstone, St. Augustine's, Shaw University. I like to describe the CIAA as the original HBCU conference. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, we were founded in 1912. Um, we were the first HBCU conference. Our tournament in 1946, um, founded in Washington, D.C., or incorporated. And um, our first tournament was in Washington, D.C. We have photos and pictures of the men who put that tournament together. You know, the, to, co to go to a game or a program was like maybe less than five dollars um, to go um, to the, the championship. I have con attended 50 consecutive CIAA tournaments. I went to my first CIAA tournament in 1974 as a freshman when Fayetteville State's men's team had won the championship. I have not missed one since then. Well, the first couple of tournaments I went to, I went to as a student, so you really couldn't 
hang like talking about it, you know, because the funds weren't there. And then after I got married, I had a couple of kids, so I really couldn't go wild like we do at the tournament. But after that, you know, I'm established. I come stay for the whole week, stay in the hotel for a whole week, and I just, just it's a different culture, but it's the same in the same minutes.
I mean, it truly has been a place where there's a lot of pride around CIAA tournament, whether I'm here or not. It's been historical because it's a place that most of our HBCU fans could go to. I mean, if you're talking through 1946 um, and then segregation um, and why our alumni attended HBCUs in the first place and athletes, because they didn't have anywhere to go. And so it definitely... You know, I don't ever want to lose sight of the historical moments um, about the CIAA when it was founded, being the first HBCU. And some people may not know that Howard, um, Hampton, Lincoln University, Shaw University, and Virginia Union are the five founding members of the conference. Um, Morgan State, Maryland Eastern Shore, North Carolina A&T, South Carolina State, North Carolina Central, Norfolk State, were all members of the CIAA before they went to Division I status. And so, you know, this conference has a lot of history um, and we're trying not to lose it because I say it all the time. But those um, who have left um, that have not been a part of the history since they've left whatever 50 years ago, I mean, it could be easily forgotten that they are members of this conference. people don't know how much HBCUs are important to the, the sports world and mm-hmm. on the professional level. Mm-hmm. Uh, why do you think that is? Like, what, is, what do you think is missing? I think, you know, I think when we, when segregation, when integration became, you know, the, the norm, if that's what you want to call it, I think we got lost. I mean, we had our own baseball teams. We had our own businesses. We had our own sports teams. We have our HBCUs. On my left, the head basketball coach at Winston-Salem State University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the winningest active basketball coach in all of America with 638 victories down through the years since 1946. And this is Clarence Big House Gaines. Coach, you started uh, some years ago, but as one of the top black college coaches with those 638 wins, I think you have done down through the years a great job of recruiting. You've had guys like Leo Hill, who went uh, Cleo Hill, who went professional, Earl Monroe. What is the situation among uh, black college basketball players? You think you can still recruit those top players? We're not getting as many of them as we did years ago. And I think actually one of the things that fans throughout America should realize that. The Bob Danridges, the uh, Earl Monroes are college graduates. A lot of the uh, boys who are drafted uh, into the, some of the large NCAA schools are, are not getting their degrees. Uh, we feel that most black colleges, all black colleges, have a great deal to offer. The uh, program is getting the type of exposure now that boys really like, uh, for example, this afternoon on television. For example, your, your color man today was say, uh, Sam Jones. Sam Jones. And Sam was probably one of the most uh, intelligent high school basketball players and college basketball players that I've ever been associated with. Played at North Carolina College. You know, it moved the needle a different way. So now our athletes who were coming to our institutions had access and opportunity to go to 
other institutions, which sometimes, again, the other might seem better or there may be more resources and opportunities. space and place that you want to go. We, we are not going to change our mission of educating black and brown people. Um, athletics is an extension of who we are. Um, and just like band and cheer is an extension of who we are. But ultimately, our presidents want students to get a degree um, and be great citizens and be the next generation of leaders. And sport is going to be supported, but not to compromise um, you know, what the mission is in graduating black students. Today we're going to give y'all musicality, execution, excitement, and more importantly for all y'all high school students, when this is over, I got a mission over there to admit y'all on the spot. Last but not least, if you ready to see a band, and that band director ain't rapping all up in the stage, you make some noise. You sure? Y'all ready? This right here, ranked by ESPN, is the number one HBCU D2 band in the country. It's the Virginia State University Trojan Explosion Marching Band. The show now is just beginning. <laughs> That's right. 
my shit, baby. Can I get a hold on, Scoot? Hold on, Scoot. Think about Earl the Pearl and what he did for the game. Bobby Dandridge, what he did for the game. Ben Wallace, what he did for the game. Charles Oakley, what he did for the game. And I can keep going on, you know, right now, um, Josh Williams that's playing um, at the um, Kansas City Chiefs. Look what he's doing for the game. I mean, he's only two years out from college, you know, so he may not have gone to a, a large Division I institution, but he definitely has the skill set and the attitude to compete at any level. Next level sports and entertainment. Come on, Michael. Let's give him a round. Can we, can we put our hands together? Good morning, everybody. Come on, can we put our hands together real quick? All right, y'all been sitting for a little bit, right? We've been watching that. Can, can y'all stand up for me? Stand up for me. Stand up for me. Stand up for me. Stop the video. Stop the video. Stop the video. Stop the video. I need all y'all to come in the middle for a second. I need everybody to come in the middle for a second. Because y'all been standing around for a little bit. Come on, get in the middle. Get in the middle. Trust me. Now we're gonna see. We're gonna see who can actually swag. Can y'all swag over here? Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. I, I, I see the shoulders moving already. I see those shoulders moving already. to see somebody that looks like you with like that type of status like a president of a company all that. I seen you you really was networking so how, how is that for you uh, it just it just made me feel uh, more comfort and more confident just knowing that somebody went through the similar journey that I went through and you know I'm having feelings like of not knowing what after college looks like but to know that people has have found different experiences uh, it just it really opened my eyes and uh, inspired me to continue to move forward and just have faith that it's going to work out.
If someone asked you to describe the CIAAs, what would you tell them? Oh, you know, wow. Speaking of the tournament. Well, I've described the CIAA so many times. And when I'm talking to a bunch of men, I said, man, there's so many beautiful women walking around here. And I tell them about one year when Jane Kennedy was one of the prettiest black women in the country. She was on NFL sports and everything. And she was like the MC. And she was walking around, she's gorgeous. But she was just another woman. Come in to be the first. I came in to be the commissioner, and to do a job and to lead. Um, and I just happened to be the first to be hired, uh, the first black woman to be hired. And there's only been three commissioners for the CIAA, so you know that's interesting by itself. And one CIAA, I was coming back, and I was in Detroit, I believe it was Detroit, and I, I bumped into her, and I said to her, I said, Jackie, you know, with all this, because she had done the NCAA men's tournament. You know, in just some form. I didn't know exactly what she did. I said, well, you might want to think about coming back to CIAA. I don't know if I put that bug in her ear or not, but I recall telling her that. You know, the next thing I know, they were telling me that she's going to be the new commissioner. And so I was ecstatic. Jackie McWilliams is my favorite commissioner in all of sports. Uh, second to her will be Adam Silver from uh, basketball. Uh, I got it. Actually, interestingly enough, got a great picture of the both of them together in Indianapolis. Because the CIAA uh, conference had the HPCU game this year as a part of the All-Star Weekend, NBA All-Star Weekend in Indianapolis. Uh, I think she's a superstar, uh, amazing person to work with, a great soul, great spirit. Uh, beyond being extremely smart, she's got a feel for games, she's got a feel for students, and she's got a feel for good decisions because the decision was hers ultimately, along with the boards, to move the uh, games from Charlotte to Baltimore, which has turned out to be a great decision. So I think it's been my intention to make sure that I, you know, reach down and, and raise others as I move along and help them prepare themselves in these roles, because they're not easy roles. Being a commissioner is not an easy role. Um, and it's definitely mission work um, for me um, to serve and to lead and to make impact, to negotiate, um, to smile, you know, to, to love on these student athletes and to love on these coaches and administrators. Um, cause that's just what we do here in the CIAA, but that's what I do in the industry. To the wall, to the wall. Say this, say no, but a Smith thing. That's all, that's all, that's all.
Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. As far as as far as the tournament goes, the biggest difference between Charlotte and Baltimore is in Baltimore, more people actually come to the game. Charlotte was famous for loads of great parties, which are uh, which happen here in Baltimore, but people actually attend the game more in Baltimore, and we've had uh, record audiences for it, and that's what's made it a lot more fun. You get the spirit and the energy here for the games inside the inside the stadium. <laughs> would say Baltimore has given us the greatest opportunity to create exactly what I dreamed the tournament would look like in partnership and relationship and impact. Um, in terms of CIAA, we've had a really great working relationship with them. We're proud to be there. The tournament's uh, official merchandiser. Um, it was has been a labor of love, um, but it has gotten us here. The feedback has been so well received um, and we have a location set up here at our flagship store. Um, we have one at the uh, setup at the convention center and at the CFG arena. So um, we're we're grateful for the partnership uh, with CIAA. I think everybody should wear a CIAA product, um, rep one of our institutions, or wear any HBCU product. I think all of us wear HBCU gear in a very proud in a very pride proud proudful manner um, because we know what that means. So you know when we see each other. Whether you went to one of our schools or went to a different school, there's just a value and respect that we have for each other because we know the value of HBCUs. All of the schools that we represent, we're licensed, and that was something that was very important for us to be a licensed vendor, to be able to, you know, sell the merchandise. Because for us, not only was it about just the revenue part of it, but through this brand, we're able to give back to the HBCU. So a percentage of all of our sales, it goes back to the schools, it goes back to the, the universities and institutions. Um, and it's collaborative because the event is too big for the conference itself and my staff to do by itself.
Baltimore. My name is Anthony Fitzgerald. I'm the GM part owner of So Baltimore. Um, it's been a blessing this week of having CIAA in town in Baltimore. It actually brought revenue to the city. It also gave the people in the city something to look forward to, which allowed us as a sports bar to expand and you know get, get it out to people that don't know who we are. It's been a blessing, and uh, hopefully it continues to be a success here in Baltimore to CIAA. What's up, y'all? It's your in-game arena host, Kyle, on the mic. Listen, today, Friday night, was crazy. The whole day was crazy. And we have now our women champions and our men champions. Facing off tomorrow. The energy was crazy. The crowd was love. And I can't wait to see what happens. Good night, y'all. Get some rest. And we'll see y'all right back here tomorrow. Importance. It's kind of like when your mama pull up, but you've been kicking it with your favorite auntie, so y'all be on y'all best behavior real quick. While I bring out, of course, Miss Jackie McWilliams Parker, the CIAA Commissioner. Hey, everybody. I told them they better act right. I like how you said I'm somebody's mama, because no. I am somebody's mama no, coming up here. Saying. And y'all look good and doing well. There are 6,000 people in here. Woo. Give yourself a hand. Yes, for packing it out. Yes, and how about Wendy's, y'all? How about Wendy's? That biggie bag will get you through. Y'all been our partner for three years, and y'all wow. making it happen. You keep making it bigger and better. Yeah, yeah. give Wendy's a hand. Um, never in a lifetime, and I've always played on pretty successful teams, but never in a lifetime did I think I'd be playing on a national championship team, an HBCU team that went all the way to Fargo, North Dakota, um, where some of these young people, young women have never been on a plane that far or have seen snow like they saw in Fargo, North D Dakota. So, you know, again, it's that experience that when you play at an HBCU, your exposures and every college team could say that, but at HBC, to me, it's a little bit different. I graduated from the illustrious Tennessee State University, um, where I play as Delta Sigma Theta, uh, Sorority Incorporated, Alpha Chi Chapter. When I think of HBCU, just in its entirety, I think of culture, I think of Black, I think of family, I think of pride, I think of legacy. Um, to me, it is one of those things that you, unless you experience it, you'll never really be able to identify with it. We had the opportunity a couple of times to men and the women make their finals for summer come up and we would lose. And as an older alumni, you know, it's like I'm out there playing, my heart beating and everything, because I wanted so bad for the kids and for the university. You know, because it did a lot for me at Philbert State. You know, I didn't appreciate it when I was there, but when, once you get away and see things, you know, you get a better perspective. Enjoy your time here. I hope you come back and take part in Fan Fest. 
I hope you know the impact that we're making in this city is tremendous. We had 2,500 students in here hoping to go to one of our CIAA schools. We have a young man who is about 11 years old who got a media credential. He's taking pictures and being a part of this experience. Keep shooting, man. Keep doing your thing, bro. How old are you? 11? That's fire, man. Never seen a young shooter like that. That's fire. That's fire. Be nice, too. Word. Be nice, too. <laughs> Part of our mission is legacy leadership and community. The legacy, making sure we never forget that we are the first HBCU conference in the country. We were founded in 1912, first tournament in 1946. Founding schools, Howard Hampton, Lincoln, Virginia Union, and Shaw University. You know, I've, I played in the uh, MEAC, I coached in the MEAC, played in the ACC, coached in the Missouri Valley League Conference, and it ain't nothing like the CIAA tournament, period. Um, and just really grateful for the opportunity to play on a national championship team that year. I was a freshman. We didn't win the CIAA. The one loss we had was in the tournament. That's why I always tell people, like, the basketball tournament is, it's tough. You can, you never know who's going to win the game. Now there's five black women that are commissioners, um, two in Division Three, um, myself, and three in Division One, um, and, and a Latino. So, you know, that's um, we've made some pretty good strides since I've been in this role. I was the only one for a while, and now, and one of them is here today. Um, invited her, um, so I'm Portia Hogue. I'm excited that you know, if if I was a trend setter, you know, for folks to see that black women can lead in these spaces, then great. She knows what she's doing. You know, a lot of times as a male, you think that you know more than a female, but you got the same brain capacity. You know, so she can hunt in the job. And if she's better than a guy, she need to have the position. If they find a guy who's better than her, then maybe they should have the position. But right there, you know, she's doing a whole lot of things. She's uh, great in the marketing aspect of it, and she's bringing in all these corporate sponsorships that I don't think we really had before her time. I'm not really sure because I wasn't in that aspect of it, but everything I've seen has been great. have a good time, but we're going to make some impact while we do it. The party thing really took off more so in Charlotte, where, it, to, in my opinion, was a detriment to the, uh, the tournament itself in Charlotte, because more people were out at the day parties instead of in the arena supporting the kids, because the tournament's for the kids, so you need to support the kids. Uh, we had some nice parties in, in the Norfolk area, in Hampton, in Virginia, but most of the people came to the games and then went to the party. But Charlotte kind of changed that whole concept. Um, and it is a party in the venue and outside of the venue. I think what we get to do in here and create the energy, which you have seen, if you haven't seen it. I mean, folks who don't dance become dancers, um, learning different types. It's, it's music, art and entertainment all together. And we've done a really good job in balancing our official events, our fan fest events.
and what's happening in the venue with unique talent, national talent that will be here this week. Jackie McWilliams. I'm the CIAA Commissioner. I'm a former HBCU grad, Hampton University, a former two-sport athlete, basketball and volleyball, a Hall of Famer, a member of the 1988 Division II Women's National Basketball Team. I've been the leader of this conference for 12 years. We are making a tremendous impact. I love this conference, and I am CIAA for life. Enjoy your time, and thank you so much, fraternities and sororities, for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mick Williams. Y'all give it up. Y'all see a lady like that in the wheels. You don't play with her. You don't play Hold with that. her. Did you peep the credentials? CIAA 2024 in Baltimore is a wrap. We had a great week, great basketball down to the wide championship. Great vibe, great culture all week. We see y'all next year here in Charm City.